So this week, I got another strike mission for you. And this was a trip to Kodiak, Alaska that I did last month. I actually spent most of September in the mountains with my bow in hand, and uh, it was awesome. Not only to break away from the craziness for a long time and just be out of cell phone reception, but just be in this amazing, raw, natural environment. And um, it came up kind of last minute. Somebody had a mountain goat tag that was a part of the Yeti crew and they weren't able to go at the last minute so they gave me a call and I was like yes I would love to go because I have no idea if I'm gonna have an opportunity to do this ever again and um, hunting mountain goat with a bow has been something that I've wanted to try ever since the first time I saw one on an elk hunt in Idaho way up in the mountains just because the areas that these mountain goats live is just so rugged and so challenging that um, I just wanted to see if I could do that. And the concept of seeing them way up on this vertical cliff face, you know, at 10, 11,000 feet and trying to figure out how to get close enough with a bow and arrow to take one um, just seemed fascinating to me. So off I went and um, it, it was insane. So we got to Kodiak and we actually had to hop in float planes to get to a totally remote part of the island. And Kodiak Island's about the same size as the big island in Hawaii, but it has way more coastline because it's such a abstract coastline shape to this whole island. And um, you know, you're dealing with 24 foot tides, a ton of weather. Um, my friend Cole Kramer is, was the guide for us. And so he has all these things to contend with and the wind was blowing uh, between like 50 and 70 knots for the first three days in the location that we wanted to end up. So we had to spend a bunch of time in Cole's garage and hanging around and checking out Kodiak town. Finally made it to Kodiak. Took a little longer than expected. It's day three in Kodiak, waiting for the wind to come down so we can get in deep on the uh, low plains. As you can see by the windmills, the wind is pretty spicy still just hoping that it comes down this afternoon and we can get out there, but uh, just been cruising. Stunning vistas. Um, just the intrepid crew. So that, uh, this rip, so you see, like, Say something yeah. inspiring. Uh, we're sitting in Cole's garage reading books and waiting for airplanes. We were training hard. Athletes. Athletes. And, back south. and uh, finally the weather broke. We just always had to be ready in case we got a window. And I uh, hopped in the float planes, loaded them up with all of our gear and camp for five, six days and got out there. Stuck in Kodiak for about four days waiting for the wind to get better. And this morning is looking pretty nice. So we'll have a little weather window to get in on the float planes here. Just loading up, weighing bags and humans. We're off, hopefully. How many fish are there? <laughs> wow, so many. 
as you can see, all these salmon are coming to the end of their run. They're like decomposing while they're still alive. Pretty crazy. This little river, I guess you'd call it, is just completely full of them. Never seen this before. Definitely out in the sticks. I mean, we dropped gear at one location. We landed at another. We had to hike 10 miles to get to where our the rest of our stuff was, set a base camp. And then um, from there, we actually had to spike camp out and have camp on our backs some days to go deeper and deeper. Because when we first saw these goats <laughs> through the spotting scopes, it was so far away and so high up on a cliff face. It just looked like tiny little white specks. And just the concept of figuring out how to get to where they were and get a shot on them was just like hard to comprehend, honestly. And uh, by the time we made it to base camp and set up, started hiking the following day, uh, we realized that the goats got pushed twice as far back into this mountain range um, because a brown bear was giving them a hard time. There's brown bears everywhere. It's the largest bear on earth besides the polar bear. And uh, that's just a reality over there. I mean, the salmon are running, you're walking on bear trails. It's so thick in a lot of places that you're like, oh, thank God I found a bear trail. First bear. Right, I believe he's right there. Like a nine foot boar. But you obviously don't want to run into a bad situation. Like I would never ever go and do this without um, somebody like Cole who really knows everything about the area and the bears because you could probably get yourself eaten. Okay, heading up high. Got tents in our packs and leaving our stuff down here. That's a bear fence. First mountain goat we've seen up close-ish. And it's a young belly and he's walking right this way. This is the second saying this because I took a photo the first time I saw this <laughs> But it was just amazing, man. I, we hiked our butts off and finally got up into the goats and uh, everything came together. And we had identified how many goats were in the herd. There's 38 goats and we were watching them in the spotting scope the day before. Decided to camp on the mountain that night. And out of the 38 goats we identified which was the biggest, oldest billy. Um, which is the male. So the goal is to take a super mature male out of the herd because the nat most of the nannies had um, kids with them. Some of them didn't. But uh, you're looking to take that male out that's past his prime breeding age and that way the other males can come up and spread their genetics as well. So when we finally found the goat herd again, we had already done about 14 hours of hiking that day. And that's like a lot of gnarly stuff like side hilling and bushwhacking ups and downs. And so we were pretty spent and decided to camp on the mountain there to make a move on the goats the following day. What's happening Sloan? Well they set up two tents in the time we set up one tent. But we're sleeping on goats tonight. Yep. We're going to kill them in the morning. But we're perfectionists. Ours is probably set up a lot better. Either way I think we're going to sleep alright tonight. Yeah. What do you think we did? Five, six miles today? A lot of vert. <laughs> At least five or six miles, right? I don't know. As my a... phone, I checked like midday. My phone said like three and a half. And you like, got to be kidding me. I may have had it off though. That was ridiculous how much we hiked today. Yeah, you thought so, right? Yes. Yeah. That was absurd. I thought maybe I was just being a huge pussy. But... <laughs> how many miles did your phone say, Slon? Uh, I'll check it again, but I had it off a lot of the day, but it was still like three, three and a half. Yeah. Like, I don't think it was a huge amount of distance. Like seven. I feel like it was like seven. Probably. Seven and a lot of vert. A lot of vert. A lot of vert. How much vert you think? Plenty of vert for the kids. Choke vert, bro. Man, what a fucking spot though. Jesus. Pretty nice spot to live. We set up camp, had this amazing sunset. Uh, really beautiful, special place that we were in. And uh, got some food in us and went to sleep. And the next day, 
it turned out that the goats, the goats were actually feeding on a face kind of in our direction. So we had to loop around to the opposite side of this ridge line that they were on and our wind was good and try to intercept where they're going to cross over and um, ended up connecting with the biggest billy in the herd and got a good arrow in and he went down. And that's when it really gets hard because you know, you, you process the meat, you know, break it down into carryable pieces, take the hide, take the skull. So everything, rib meat has to come um, and then pack this up. So it gets distributed in, in everybody's packs. So at the end of the day, you have between, or I had probably an 80 plus pound pack and another 14 hours of hiking. And this is like brutal hiking. <laughs> through thick stuff, bushwhacking, you know, s stuff where you got to make noise because you don't want to run into a giant brown bear, especially one, a sow with cubs, because that's when bad things really do happen. Um, we saw plenty of bears on the hike and uh, it was just an ass kicker. Like my little surfer legs were quivering so hard by the end. Like the last five hours were just straight up brutal. And it started to get lightheaded and everything. And we made it back to camp and, and I was like, gosh, why am I so buckled right now? And uh, my buddy Trevor, who was there, he, he had his, one of those fitness watches and he's like, oh yeah, well, we burned 5,700 calories today and uh, like 4,500 calories yesterday. And I was like, oh, I had two seed bars today. No wonder, like my body is consuming itself. So it's like at the end of these hunts, it's like, you're getting this amazing meat, this experience, this challenge, but honestly, I probably burned as many calories as I'm getting from this meat that we'll be eating for the next year. Look at these schmucks. Sam, I don't think you would take this, but it's serious. Content! Ooh, that was a deep one. But all in all, just an incredible adventure and uh, got to spend time with some really cool people and get to know them. Uh, I can't complain. Don't know if I'm ever going to have another hunt like that again, but uh, super appreciative. I, I hope this gets you inspired to get outdoors, especially now with everything going on, like find a way to disconnect. It was great.